You could call, you could call on me. You could fall, you could fall on me. And if you want to, tell me what you're gon' do. You could put it all, put it all on me. Speed it. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> When you need me, relax and get in my way. I'm flying down the interstate. Just know, just know. When you can't pull through, I'm not high on you. No, it ain't no thing, no, it ain't no thing, you know what to do. You could call, you could call on me. You could fall, you could fall on me. And if you want to, Welcome to Fairlawn Special Camp Scugog Sunday. It is the first Sunday in May, and thankfully we've been blessed of late with sunny skies and warm temperatures. Isn't it calming and refreshing to see the budding trees, to hear the chirping birds, and to feel the wind blowing gently against your cheeks? Well, children and mums from Toronto's high need neighborhoods need a similar chance to refresh in nature and they get it each summer when they spend time at the United Churches Camp Scugog. This camp is located about 60 kilometers northeast of Toronto. Fairlawn has had a long and fulfilling relationship with Camp Scugog over the past nine years. We've sent close to 100 individuals to camp, provided volunteers for camp cleanup days, and helped stock the camp library with leftover books from our annual book sale. We fostered relationships with campers through summer letter writing and throughout COVID we worked with Scugog staff to help them stay connected with their campers and families through special projects like the summer memory calendar and an all camper friendship bracelet challenge. This has all been made possible by your generous financial donations and participation in our yearly Camp Scugog Craft Shacks. This morning we come together to celebrate the power of courage, creativity, and community. Three things that the families and staff of Camp Scugog drew on, first to cope and then to move forward during the past two years of COVID. Later in the service, via the magic of video, we'll have a chance to hear the Camp Scugog COVID story told by Camp Director Dana and her daughter, Emily. As we settle into worship together this morning, let us feel the rejuvenating power of nature for ourselves. Let us pray. Creator and life giver, maker of every element and cell, each drop of water and every breath of air, all was created and all was pronounced to be good. Sun and moon, land and waters, the flyers and crawlers, the swimmers, the four-legged, and the two-legged. We gather today as one family in creation, not simply one human family, but one earth community, interwoven, interdependent, and all in relationship with you. Amen. I'm going to be reading you a story from John, a post-resurrection story. It's a story that I didn't really discover and appreciate until I was an adult. And the older I get, the more important this story becomes for me. It's a delightful story of Jesus appearing to some of his disciples on a lake shore with a barbecue going, a charcoal fire, and with fish and bread, waiting to feed them breakfast. When I was about 17, I was at a CGIT girls camp council in New Brunswick. And I can remember the morning that we got up to have early morning communion um, at the lake. And we stood on the shore, it was very, very cold. And um, we told this story 
and we talked about it. And there was fish that had already been cooked and bread that was also on the fire warming. And it was our communion to begin that day. It was a holy, holy time. This story continues to make me smile, to make me wonder, and to make me dream. Let's listen to the words. Later, and Jesus himself appeared again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. This is how it happened. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two other disciples were together. Simon Peter told them, I'm going fishing. They said, we'll go with you. And they set out in a boat, but throughout the night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples didn't realize that it was Jesus. Jesus called to them, children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, no. He said, cast your nets on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they did. And there were so many fish that they couldn't haul in the net. Then the disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it, that it was the Lord, he wrapped his coat around himself, for he was naked, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they weren't far from shore, only about 100 yards. When they landed, they saw a fire there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you've just caught. Simon Peter got up and pulled the net to shore. It was full of large fish, 153 of them, yet the net hadn't torn even with so many fish. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples could bring themselves to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. COVID has been tough on all of us, and especially for children and youth who feel like they've lost two important years of their lives. For Toronto area kids and families living in challenging circumstances, the closure of Camp Scugog for the past two years has meant their place of calm and oasis has not been available to them. Well, not in its usual form. In the following short video presentation, we are going to hear from Camp Director Dana and her daughter Emily. They're going to tell us about the courage and creativity that Scugog used to foster a new sense of community, a stronger sense of community that has propelled them in new and exciting directions. Hi, Fairlawn Avenue United Church. I'm here today from Scugog to say thank you to you. Thank you for sticking with us for the last two years through this pandemic and helping us come out the other end in one piece. At the beginning of the pandemic, it became very obvious very quickly that our community was struggling. Food was hard to find, uh, school had changed to online and many of them didn't have computers, uh, didn't have access to internet. So it became pretty obvious pretty quickly that we needed to shift gears and help. The first thing people needed to do was have food in their homes and accessing food was becoming increasingly difficult. So with your help, we fed our community. We sent uh, what was intended to be a month's worth of groceries out to all of our moms uh, and staff families that needed it also. But the moms were so grateful because it allowed them time to take a breath, regroup and figure out what to do. Next, we very much realized we need to figure out a way to keep our community together and to deal with people's mental health issues and just anxieties and concerns and, and where do we go from here. So we started a weekly mom's tea time on Zoom. Um, one of the st things that happened with the moms uh, this year was that we had a mom who's taken a, uh, an office admin course and uh, was applying for jobs and just not getting anywhere and doing everything right. She'd done all the right courses. She We'd got her dressed and she had good clothes to wear to an interview. She's well-spoken, she's articulate and she's bright. 
but she kept coming back and saying, I just, I don't have any references. I don't have anybody I know here. There's no one to give them. How do you get a job if you didn't have a job? How do you give a reference if you don't know anybody? And Carol piped up and said, I can write you a reference. And the next week she came back to us full of joy because she'd found a job. So it's the simple things like that that have just helped get us through as a community. Then came the holidays and we were finding again, families were struggling with just the whole concept of how do you bring joy in your house with a couple of small children when you're by yourself, you can't go out of your apartment, there's no money there. So again, we started sort of partnering some of our um, Scugog families with perhaps board members, staff members, anybody that was willing to be a partner with somebody in, in, a, in, a, fa in a holiday and help make it happen. During this time, we were also supporting our young people, our staff, our moms with weekly conversations, help with schooling, with really anything anybody needed that we could possibly help them with. By the second summer, we realized again that we couldn't have a full camp, but that we could offer something to our young people who were the ones that most seemed to need out. So we had a program last summer that was for about 10 young people and we ran a full two weeks with fun and community and togetherness. We broke bread together three times a day and it was an amazing, amazing two weeks that left people going home from camp feeling better about themselves, feeling more secure in who they were, feeling more confident and ready to face what the fall was going to throw at us again. This year has been a time for reflection and to decide where do we go from here. And the things that we see ourselves needing is sustainability, both financially and environmentally. So we applied for a Trillium grant and we got it. Uh, that Trillium grant this year has for us finished our farmhouse. We've got a beautiful, beautiful century old farmhouse, a beautiful Victorian, which we have uh, finished the outside of, replaced a lot of siding. All of our windows now are double glazed. We have a four season facility. And with that four season facility now, it means that we can run program all year long. So we started this year a nature school. And in that nature school, we'll t we're taking some uh, students who are full paying and some who we are working with Jumpstart so that we continue to, to give our community program. On top of the Trillium grant, which gave us money to put some kind of furnace in the farmhouse, we have been able to raise enough money to put geothermal in our farmhouse. So our farmhouse now is insulated. It has heating in the winter, cooling in the summer, and it's all geothermal. So it will sustain us into the future. That place won't cost an arm and a leg to heat, which is huge. So Fairlawn, with your help this summer, we are opening our doors. We have campers registered. We have moms registered and we have staff. And I cannot wait to hear the sound of joy on the hill and to break bread in our new dining hall. Thank you very much for sticking with us and I look forward to seeing many of you over the summer. Please join us. Give it to me
Today's prayer is by the Reverend Kate Williams of the Diocese of Gloucester in England, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Creator God, we acknowledge that as your handiwork, we stand alongside all that you have made. Trees and rivers, mountains and valleys, soaring birds and scuttling creatures, all are held within your care. May we grow in our love and appreciation of nature's never-ending power for renewal and rebirth. And may our awe and wonder draw us closer to the natural world, to each other and to you, the God of all things. Now we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us to say, Our Creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. COVID story to be uplifting and inspirational. I know I did. With your help this year, we've already raised $4,000 towards our goal of sending 10 or more individuals to camp. If you'd like to make this goal a reality, donations are welcomed by a check, e-transfer, or credit card, which goes through Canada Helps. For more information, please go to the Scugog page on the Fairlawn Avenue United Church website. If you don't mind getting a little dirt under your fingernails, you're also invited to join a small but mighty team of Fairlawners who will be participating in Camp Cleanup Day on Saturday, May the 7th. Please use the email provided on the slide for more information about how you can get involved. And now this blessing. Let us give thanks for the world around us. Thanks for all the creatures, stones, and plants. Let us learn their lessons and seek their truths so that their path might be ours and we might live in harmony, a better life. May the earth continue to live. May the heavens above continue to live. May the rains continue to dampen the land. May the wet forests continue to grow. Then the flowers shall bloom and we the people shall live with joy in new creation. Go in peace, my friends. Go in peace.